Cigars, antique cars, and Gitmo, that tropical paradise where we don't have to worry about human rights or our pesky constitution. We've been holding a grudge against Cuba for a long time. It's like that one you've been holding against your sister that photo she tagged you in on Facebook. <laughs> and we've had an embargo against Cuba for over 50 years. Despite the UN and human rights organizations condemning it for being against international law. Why is this place so dangerous again? They're the third least um, they have a lowest murder rate, um, the third lowest murder rate in the Western Hemisphere, 99.8% literacy rate, and a lower infant mortality rate than the United States. Not exactly the stats you'd expect for a country put on a 50 year timeout. Last December, Obama announced pl plans to normalize relations with Cuba. But it's still largely illegal for US citizens to go there. In fact, since Obama announced those plans, we've levied a quarter billion dollars in fines for uh, violating the sanctions. My goal today is to convince you to go anyway. <laughs> and I'm going to give you some tips how to do it. It's a li little tricky to get there, as you might expect. Um, and uh, fines are up to $250,000 in 10 years in prison. So for the record, that photo is totally photoshopped. Historically, the only way to get to Cuba was to charter a plane or to go through Mexico or a country like the Bahamas. Uh, but starting tomorrow, JetBlue is going to be offering flights from JFK to Havana. So that's going to make things an awful lot easier. Now, when you land in Havana, your credit card won't work. Your, the ATM will reject your credit card. The only way to do it is to show up with a pile of cash. <laughs> and you'll get a, uh, you can exchange it just fine. Um, just remember, you can only get Cuban currency in Cuba, and if you run out, there's no getting more. Cuba's a little weird too because they have dual currencies, and both are widely used. Uh, one is equivalent to the dollar, and the other is worth 125th as much. So you want to make sure you get those straight, or else it can be a very expensive mistake. Internet is pretty rare. Uh, about 4% of Cubans have internet access, and think $7 for dial-up speeds. So um, one, one tip I can give you is to set up a VPN before you go, it makes it a little bit faster, and you can access sites that are completely blocked by the US embargo. Um, apps that have offline modes like Google Maps and TripAdvisor can be total lifesavers, and unless you're fluent in Spanish, something an offline translation app can be a huge lifesaver. And despite all the hassle, it's truly worth the trouble to taste this forbidden fruit. Cuba is unlike anywhere else you can go in the world. History comes alive as you see this country that has been frozen in time. I mean, how many places can you go without seeing a McDonald's and Starbucks or really any brands at all? For better or worse, these corporations are on their way, and my only hope is that they serve up free internet along with their obesity. <laughs> you might think of Uber or Lyft as coming up with the idea of ride sharing. But in Cuba, it's just the way they've been getting around for decades. Pay your dollar and you can jump in a stinky old car with five other people, 10% chance of breaking down along the way. <laughs> they don't have a lot of hotels in Cuba, but that's okay. Um, you c they have Casa Particulars and you have the authentic Cuban experience. Just walk around to see a blue anchor over the door and you can rent a room for the night in a private home. Airbnb recently launched in Cuba as well, so you can book ahead online. Of course, they have thousands of these homes in Cuba and, and only a handful of them are on Airbnb. On the right in this photo is my friend Ramses. He's college educated, fluent in English, and one of the lucky few to have internet access at work. I introduced him to Airbnb and helped him sign up his first CASA. By being a middleman, he's helping dozens of CASAs get online in Cuba. He, only make, he makes a couple dollars per booking, but in a country where the average salary is $22 a month, it's really life-changing, even though a small opportunity like that. Last month, a new art exhibit went live on the Malacom, which is a waterfront strip in Havana. And this is a depiction of a Facebook like button. Um, they don't know Facebook. Um, and this is just one of many US-themed exhibits that can be found on the Malacom today. The people of Cuba are curious about the United States and they're excited to meet you. It's time for us to end our pointless embargo against Cuba. And for you, I hope you'll go see this beautiful country for yourself. I'm Josh Fraser, thank you, and have a good flight.